out of our women's conference, the beginning of a new era, and I'm telling you, it was just amazing. The word of the Lord that came forth, and but not just even the word, the fun. The fun, the games, the enjoyment, the fellowship that we had with one another, and these women just brought forth powerful, powerful words of instruction, and just giving us just some really good things for uh, what's coming ahead of us, the beginning of a new era in our life, and the closing of the past, that we can move forward in freedom, and it is just exciting. So we want to share with you what you missed, and I know many of you were not able to be there, so we want to bring it to you, and where you can just partake of it and enjoy and see what God is saying for this beginning of a new era. Preaching, teaching, foretelling, and forthtelling the full message of the gospel is her ministry. Pastor Georgia Batts is the founder of Change Life Outreach Ministries, Inc. in Eatonville, Washington. She is one that searches the deeper truths of God's Word and has a sincere passion to teach God's people the truth that she discovers. Please welcome Pastor Georgia Batts. All right. It's something. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm looking for Pastor Deborah. She's not down just yet? Okay. And I got this over here too. Well, bless the name of the Lord. I thank God for being here with everybody here this evening. I am just having a good time. I thank God for blessing me to be here and to be a part of what's going on in this conference this year. The beginning of a new era. Yes, it is. The beginning of a new era and a new time in each one of our lives. And I'm excited about that. I really am. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Thank God for being left for such a time as this. Yes. For being kept by the power of God yes. for such a time as this. Because this is a time when those of us that have been around for a while um, will can be very instrumental in what God wants to do in this latter time. And so I'm glad to be here because I've been around for a while. So I'm just thrilled to be here among Women that I've never met before, very, very pleasant, very uh, enjoyable, just sitting at the table eating, and we uh, just enjoy being together. Thank God for the clock back here, and I'm going to do like they do when you are on television and on radio. They get you out of there, you know, they count you down in two seconds, and then they're going to a commercial. <laughs> And if you're not ready to get out, well, then you just should have been. So I'm not going to, I probably won't even utilize 58 minutes because I'm not going to be with, in the presence of you a long, long time. Now, I'm one of these long-winded kind of people, but this isn't the day for it. So I, and <laughs> this is not the day. And so I'm, oh, I'm perfectly all right with that. Glad to be here in Seattle at the conference. This morning, I missed all the good stuff. I hope you got some tape. Please, I'm, I'm begging to have some tapes that I can look at later on and see what everybody had to say, and I can learn what I needed to learn this morning. But you know what? This is a word you might hear me say very often, and that is that I'm tired and I need rest. You don't hear me. You won't hear me say that. Didn't get that much last night, of course, but... Um, I was thinking to myself that when everything is over, then I'm going to go away for about a week and for the sole purpose of doing absolutely nothing. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do the kind of nothing that they don't describe when they say nothing. <laughs> you know, nothing means nothing. But this nothing I'm going to do, you can't even define it. <laughs> That's how 
nothing is going to be. So I just want to have a bit of time to think before the Lord and to meditate on the things that are coming in the second, with the first half of this 2023. And this is a year of manifested blessings in the lives of the people of God. I said that in the very beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to me and he said, this will be the year of manifested blessings. Now, the things that are taking place would, would make you think that any blessings are going to be manifested. But they are indeed going to be manifested. Things that you pray for, things that you just really desire in your life, you're going to see the manifestation of them. You know, one thing to believe God by faith, and there's another thing for your faith in in sight, isn't it? We're going to see sight some. We're going to get to see some sight this year. And so I thank God for that. And I said it in the beginning. I'm saying it today, and I'm not going to ch change my mind because of uh, what's been going on in my life and in the lives of other people. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to hold that because I believe that I heard the voice of God. And then he said to me earlier, he said, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Yeah, so that means that the, that, that the window of opportunity is going to be open and it's going to be one without limits. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. And then uh, to look, and then he said to me in February, he said January, don't limit yourself. Then he said to me in February, don't uh, give up. I didn't understand that quite, and I still don't. But I was thinking at the time, that I wanted to get a housekeeper to come and help me with keeping my house. You know, my house is, uh, uh, you know how you keep house and then your house keep you. And I think what's happening, <laughs> and I think what's happening here is that <laughs> my house, you know how the scriptures say, thou, O Lord, art a shelter for me? I think my house is a shelter for me. I think it's keeping me and I'm not keeping it. And so I was thinking about having someone to help me. He said, no. If you do that, then you are surrendering things that you need to be hands-on yourself. And he says, so don't give up. Do it yourself. And so I said, okay, so I'm going to do that until he lets me out from under that gentleman. <laughs> yeah. And I'm waiting for the day that he'll say, it's okay you to do that. So, But anyway, uh, it's the time we're living in, and the, the blessings of God are about to be manifested in our lives. Start to look. And I say that. Uh, look in this way. Sometimes we're looking for great big things. Now anything God will do is a big deal. If God touches it, it's a big deal. If he give it, it's a big deal. And so anything in God is a big deal. But, but many times we're looking for something really, really big when we need to pay attention to everything that manifests itself that has victory attached to it. Because God wants to give victory in this time. He really does. He wants to give victory in this day and time. Victory over everything that has the potential to hold you in bondage. God wants to give victory. And so this will be the year of manifested victories. And so I thank God for that. And I thank God for our theme. Now, I didn't write down um, let me see if I can make this gizmo act like it should. Just sit up that this way. And that way I can look at it and go to where um, our theme is coming from. The beginning of a new era. I didn't write down definition, so I'm, I'm going to just go, like I said, I'm not going to be here if you're talking very long. So that means um, I'm going to have to go with what the Spirit of God say to me in my heart and in my mind. And so this is how we're going to go with it. But the beginning of a new era, and I think... When I turned 70 years old, the Lord said to me, he said, now you are in the age of impartation. Yeah. You know, you go to your 40s and you go through your fabulous 50s, as it were, and the sensational 60s, somebody say. And in the 60s, the year of the 60s is when a woman comes into her own. She begins to discover who she really is and she starts to living out what it means to be a woman. I believe that the aged woman that the Lord is talking about in Titus is a woman that's in her 60s. Let the aged, at least she'll start in the 60s. Let the aged women teach the young because that's kind of an aging start uh, in women. Uh, and she comes into her own in the 60s. But he said to me when I turned 70, he said, now I want you impartation from here on in. 70s, he said, many things that 
you uh, went through, they completed a lot of things. You know, seven is the number of completion. It's God's number. And he says, uh, a lot of things were completed up until now. And he said, now is the time of impartation. And he said, I want you to take the uh, generation 35 years and younger, and I want you to minister to them. I said, Lord, now that's half my age. He said, yeah, it is. But I do quite well with it, believe it or not. 35 years and younger, because these are the ones that's going to come up behind us. The one thing that I appreciated listening to Pastor Deborah last night is she mentioned the next generation. Now, me, personally, don't want my life to end with me. I don't want my life to end with me. Now, I don't have any biological children, but I do have children that God gave me. And I don't want my life to end. Now, let me have, I think I saw a paper towel back here. Now, my crime goes beyond um, <laughs> tissue. So, I, let me get back here. This is this work. I got found a napkin back here. But my, I don't want my life to end with me. I want it to keep going because I believe that I'm looking at Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? I thought about the word house. Now, house could mean a dwelling place. It could mean a congregation. It could mean a family. But house also means a human body. And I'm thinking now about myself. And the very beginning of my life with God. And who is left among, I'm left here, yeah. to remember this house in its first glory. Yeah. Now glory represents dignity and honor. When you come into the kingdom of God, you automatically step into a realm of dignity and honor. You see, you become, become 99 and 3 quarters percent more intelligent when we get saved than we are before we do. The rest, you know, the rest of one quarter, we finish that out in a lifetime. But who is left among you that saw this house in our first story? That was me. Me, my house. And I remember the beginning of my house and the glory of God that overshadowed this house and how God configured this house. And how he brought it out of disaster and a place where I could very well have not been here if the Lord had not came and took up an abode in my house, my physical dwelling place, and in this house. So I remember what the glory of this house was from the start. Coming out from an abusive marriage, somebody that uh, made a decision that if I left them, they were going to kill me. When I before the Lord saved me, I was not going to somebody that you tell something like that to. <laughs> that you didn't really want to tell me that if I leave you, uh, you're going to kill me. Because my favorite statement to this person was, if I'm going to live 30 minutes late after, I'm going to live 30 minutes and you won't be in my life. Well, if you leave me, I, I, I will kill you. And I said these words, I said, not if I see you first. <laughs> and I say, now you are big enough fool to walk around and not really be observed. I said, well, I'm gonna look for you on every corner I cross. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I will be looking to see if you show up. And I said, if you come close enough to me, I'm gonna think you wanna do me harm. And but the Lord came to my house and he said, came to my house and got him. He did. <laughs> and he saved me. Taught me what it meant to forgive and to release and let go. And then go, I remember praying one day. And you know how we are. We like to come out of everything smelling like a rope. Well, you don't smell like one. Trust me when I tell you. When the Lord had you to start looking at yourself for real, it turns out that it's not a rosy smell that you get. 
And so when I started to thinking about my place and all of that had taken place and all of the stuff that had happened, and even to the point of getting involved in this situation, I saw where I didn't really smell that much like a rose. And so I started to talk about uh, uh, what made me get this was I was confessing the sins of uh, all the sins that have been perpetrated, as they say in law enforcement, upon me. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you can't confess nobody's sin but your own. Yeah, and he said, so now, if you want to get out of this, and this is what he said, if you want me to deliver you out of this, you're going to have to talk about you. And you're going to have to own up to your part. And I hope somebody is listening to me right now, because a lot of time, we are wanting God to do something over there when the thing we want to do is in here. You see, we're looking for God to change everybody else and get everybody else to be suited to where I need them to be. And every situation can fit into my desire. Whatever they are to do what God is looking for, it's a time when he can actually change you. And this is what he was after, a time that he could actually change me. Because with an attitude like, if I see you first, uh, yeah, that, that attitude needs to go somewhere. Yeah, that's a killer's attitude, and I've been busy. I meant what I said. I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. If I see you first, and you better be paying attention, because if I see you in a corner, I see you on. And you approach me, that's the end of you. And I meant that. So the Lord saved me. He said to me, now you can't confess anybody's sin but your own. He says, so now what is your part in this? And when I started looking at my part in it, it turns out that I didn't really smell like a rose. It wasn't until I could see me for who I really was and for what I really was that God was able to deliver me. But it brought me out of that. And brought me, he and I, I'll never forget the day that he and I walked out of that house, never to go back again. And we went, and from that day on, he and I have walked together I said to him, I said, I don't want to stay here. I know that if you are able to save me, you can save anybody. I said, so in Jesus' name, save him if he left you. But as for me, I don't want to be here anymore. And if you will deliver me out of this place, my life is yours until I see you. And I'll live it as honorably as I possibly can. That was my covenant 45, 46 years ago. And that's my covenant today. And so this is the beginning of this house. This is how I see this house in its first uh, steps into dignity and honor and someone that you can look at and uh, 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 appreciate. I tell people that I thank God for the woman that he made me to be. And then coming through all of the other things that I had to deal with. Uh, at 50 years old, you know, they talk about how people don't get divorces and all of that, and that God can't use anybody. That, that's the biggest lie, one of the biggest lies that I've told. It really is one of the biggest lies. God hates divorces, of course. It's a sin just like anything else. And if you will confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive all sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's all you got to do. You just got to know what you know and do what you know, and God will meet you where you are, and he'll take care of that yeah. for you. I never felt that God held against me having to go through that. And then that happened again in my life because it can, okay? It can. Sometimes as a rebound, sometimes just wanting to fill in a gap that you can't seem to uh, get filled in, but that the shape of that gap is Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, and you're trying to put something and somebody in it. And I asked the Lord one day, I said, what's the matter with me that I keep for attaching myself to these losers? And he said, it's because you don't trust me enough. Oh, wow. <laughs> did, I hear some, did I hear wow? <laughs> well, that's what he said. He said, because you don't trust me enough. That's it. You don't trust me enough. He said, you keep trying to make things work for yourself. You try, keep trying to put things in order like you want them to be. Yeah. And you don't trust me to know what is good for you and to know what you really need. And because you don't, you keep on tying yourself down with these losers. He said, until you trust me, I'm looking in the mirror now. You ready to go to the shopping mall? Just standing up looking in the mirror. And, and it's like he in the mirror too. He said, until you trust me, you'll continue to do the same thing. 
Right. And I said to him, I said, well, I'll tell you what. Last time, yeah. last time, I won't do it again. And he says to me, uh, at the end of the year, I was standing at the altar at New Year's, New Year's Eve. And he said, this is the last year you'll stand at the altar by yourself. Mm -hmm. He said, I am going to bless you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you what you need. And 35 years, May 14, I got, uh, got Big Terry. <laughs> <laughs> and I played since, ever since. When you, what, trust in me now. Who is it among you that saw the house in its first glory? How do you see it now? I, uh, 50 years old, um, uh, an attack of a disease that killed a lot of women that year. Colon cancer at 50. And looking at it, thinking to myself, 50 years old, a cancer that, uh, a disease that's known to kill people. And so what I had to do was get with God on that, and I sat with him one day. And he taught me all of the scriptures on healing. And I wrote them all down. And then I took them and put them on a compact, a, a CD. And so I got the healing scriptures out of going through um, colon cancer. Another place where things that have the potential to stop you, God said, something different. And for that reason, I'm still here today. Amen. The house in its first door. Back surgeries. Knees. <laughs> Got two of them. Uh, you know how you have to go out and buy your knee from time to time. I've got two of them. And just things that take place in your house that's designed to take away that glory that he brought in in the beginning. And so from time to time, you have to stop and look at the house and think about what it was like in his first glory. And then you say, to you, then you say how are you now? To hear God say, don't give up. To hear God say, don't limit yourself. You get, it'll take you down now to the scripture that our theme is based on. The glory of this ladder house. My mantra is, my ladder is greater than the formal. Whatever I was called of God to do, you can take this for yourself too. Whatever I was called of God to do, a lot of it I still have to do it. The first impartation of the glory of God, the dignity and the honor of God into my life, the fullness of that glory still has to happen. Lots of it still have to happen. And that you can be the best that you have ever been when you get to the age that I am now, and the apostle are, and the apostle and I are now. So it is a scientific fact that your brain peaks from 70 years old to 90. This is why you hear me say I've got a better mind today than I've ever had before. And so you see, that can contribute to the, the latter house being greater than the formal. The way this house was configured, the way that it was brought out and into, the way, the, the, the route God's getting ready to do now to take us, he brought, I've been brought out 45, six years ago and brought in. Now that deeper into, yeah. the deeper into, yeah. are you listening? Yeah. That deeper into is what's going to cause this house, this ladder house, this ladder to be greater 
than the former. It's because what he's going to do now is he's going to teach all of us what we already we are we thought we already knew. When I say that, people, uh, it sounds like I jumble up something. But God is getting ready to teach us what we thought we already knew. He is getting ready to expand the revelations that we thought we already had and the, in, the information that have come down from the Holy Ghost. He's about to increase that. He's going to pull that up. We're going to begin to look at the heavenly things. We're going to begin to look beyond this land that we're living in now and we're getting ready to look into the, the as they used to say, the great beyond. We're about to look into eternity and walk in eternity. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. So that's why the latter end is about to be better. The glory of this latter house is about to be greater than the glory of the former. We have to learn the initial things in the very beginning. And they are glorious as well. We have to get to know God in the beginning. That was glorious enough. enough. That was glorious for them. But now, not only getting to know God, but to walk with God. And every step you take will be orchestrated by what is said in your ear. Because this is how close you will be walking with us. And we're living in a time when that is needed. When that is needed. That needs to be the manifestation of the glory of God in an appearance. Not until you say something, but when you come in. There's a glory to be carried when you come in the room. A glory to be carried when you speak in the room. And a glory to be carried that can be covenanted by those that are looking on. This is where we're going. This is where we're going. We're stepping into eternity. We're going to live in eternity. And we won't care about being 75 years old. Because it doesn't mean anything. We won't care about being 80 years old. It won't mean anything. Why? Because we're living in an eternal realm. And there is no cessation in eternity. We're just going to walk with God. 